is up, people that fans? It's been a while since I've put out a video, and I've had a lot of questions regarding the Knights movie. Now, I'm not here to address them all, but out of all those questions, there was one. It's about this book. Now, originally, the story was going to be about this, the Knights of Samaria Journal, which you see in the post credit scene. The reason why it changed is because I couldn't figure out a script for it. So that's why in the middle of the season, if you haven't seen the middle of the season, it actually gets stolen. In the post credit scene, you got to see the guy who stole it, who is part of the Ghost Feeders. So if you were wondering what was in the bag at the end, that's what it was. But the big question that has always come up, why does this have a butthole for a mouth? I will answer that right now. The script wasn't written yet. I decided, hey, I'm gonna make a new Necronomicon. And I want it to be different. I want it to be cool. I didn't want to make it to where it's just one big eyeball and what other people have done when they make their own custom stuff. What hasn't been yet done yet? A butthole. And when I started sculpting this, and I told the cast who was in the cast already, it's gonna have a butthole for a mouth. I made the half face and I was thinking, well, maybe I should do a face down here. But I went against that. But because of this butthole, it developed the story. You wouldn't have the story that you see in the Knights movie if it wasn't for this butthole mouth. That helped frame the whole story. And I'll talk about a little bit this, a little bit of this real quick before we get to the other part of the video, which is I filmed it back in March and I show all the versions of this that I sculpted. There wasn't just one and what they're made of as well. There wasn't just one, but there was four. So in this video, I'll show all those. I filmed it back in March and I knew I couldn't show that video until the movie was out. I wanted this book to have some somewhat of a surprise when you see it. Now, one thing I don't mention, and you can't kind of see on the movie, and I'm really not going to show off, I don't want to be flagged on YouTube. In the movie, of course, it is a female. I want to, to make this movie, or make this book, sorry, to show that it is a female. And if you catch the shot just right in the Knights movie, you can see the binding here. And there's one piece right right here that shows that it is a female. So with that being said, I'm gonna show you the different books that we made, that I made for this. I sculpted them all. I'll tell you what I sculpted them out of. Everything like that, all the way from the hero one to the other three and explain what they're made of, how they're made, sculpted, everything else. And uh, if you wanna see the binding again, you're, you're gonna have to go back to the movie and find that one side shot. One guy did hit me up and he goes, what was, do I think that's what it is on the binding? And I said, what do you think it is? And he told me what it was and he was exactly right. And I said, yes, that's what it is. Because I wanted this to be definitive as it was an innocent woman's soul in the cover. And also bound to the book is the different body parts of the woman. And again, I will explain this in the video that I filmed back in March. All the different parts, uh, these are all different parts of the skin, kneecap, as you can see, this is actually the mouth right there. It actually works well as a handle. So, and this one is uh, not the hero book. This is uh, the hero book from the film is actually in the possession of the guy who played Boss, Rufus Williams, he owns that. Uh, a couple of the other ones, what's left of them, Chris Van Vleer owns. And then Jordan Crockett, and, and Chris Van Vleer pl uh, played uh, Michael Noby, the professor. And another version of it, the, uh, the uh, after version, I'm not gonna say until you watch the rest of this video, but I'm talking about the last, I would say the last shot of this book in different form is owned by Susan, played by Jordan Crockett. So there's a few versions of this, but this one is an exact replica or close to exact uh, from the hero book. I sculpted this after we were done filming because I wanted to keep one. It's the exact same size. All these are in the same place. I mean, just little minor things here and there are different. 
If you put them side by side, you wouldn't even tell. Uh, full pages. And it also has, I call this the ultimate edition because I put back in the pages that Ryan's character read from in the episode before. Now, if you don't know what these pages are, they were the two ripped out pages. And uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about uh, with Ryan having those pages, watch the episode before the Knights movie that is on YouTube on my channel. And also this is the cover page for those two missing pages as well that wasn't in the hero book. So with that being said, enjoy the different versions of the Knights, the Turum de Rendum, Necronomicon. So the first book we're gonna talk about is the hero book. This one has all the details, has all the close-ups on the film, and is kind of the main book. Now before I talk about how I made it and what I made out of, let me tell, tell you a little bit about the design. Now, it has a face, but it doesn't have a face. It's got a different spin on a face. Now, Evil Dead 1, Evil Dead 2 had a face. Army of Darkness kind of had two faces. Yeah, 2013 didn't have a face. And then Evil Dead Rise didn't have a face, but it had teeth. Now, if you've seen the film, which you should, if you haven't seen it, this is a butthole. Now, I didn't add the stitching here because it would have taken out of the look of the mouth or butthole. And these are anal warts, but it does have a mouth. The mouth is on the back. The back is made of different skin pieces. You have a kneecap over here. You have a piece of a finger here. So I didn't want stitching everywhere. So I didn't add it everywhere because it would just be overwhelming with the stitching. Now this one is made of cardboard milliput glue. Now what I mean by glue with this specific one is super glue and rubber cement, and the rubber cement that I use is the Gorilla style, but if you want to use another type, it's fine. You have your leather strapping or leather string, or you can use anything you want. I mean, you can buy these in rolls at Hobby Lobby for pretty much a couple bucks. A notebook, you have your paints. I used red, black, teddy bear tan, and burnt sienna. The tools that I used were just sculpting tools, uh, paint brushes, and a drill. And the reason why I needed a drill is to drill these holes out because Milliput gets rock solid and it doesn't shrink, which is nice. So this isn't a book I would throw around, but this is a three piece book. You can see the binding is separate from the back. Now, if you do a style like this or really any Necronomicon, I suggest to have a wide binding. It gives you more room to work when adding the pages. Now let's look inside. Now this is where the rubber cement comes into play with the notebook. You can see a bunch of pages. Now each one of these were separate from this book. So I did all the pages first individually. And what I did is did the strip method here. So I had a bunch of these pieces, I think they were two inches in diameter, so, or width, I'm sorry. So an inch here, then an inch bent over to the other side, folded over each other, as you can see, then stapled and glued to an outside strip, and then simply just glued in to the middle of the book, and then you just add your pages, and you just glue them to that strip. That's really all you do. You can see here, the eye holes are missing. That's because if you watch the film, the lighting goes through them and then also the stuff coming through the mouth. But really, that's it for that. But this is the hero style. This one is 100% sculpted out of Milliput and it's heavy, hard as a rock, something you do not want to throw around. And I did make a couple others and you might say, Brett, why didn't you just mold this thing and do a few others out of latex? Well, the, I didn't want to spend a ton of money. If I would have made a mold of this, I would have had to buy everything needed to make a mold of this and then latex. And now I'm into not just under a hundred bucks for four of them. Now I'm into about two to 300 bucks for just two more of them. So, Let's look at the next book. The next book we have is 
the stunt book. One thing I didn't mention with the hero book is beads for the uh, anal warts. That's another thing that I spent money on. Uh, I forgot to mention that. I do apologize. I used everything for this book that I did with the hero book, except this uh, stunt book over here is not made of Milliput. This one is made of foam clay. And foam clay is only $3.99. And you only need one of these for two or three books. And the reason for that is it's lightweight. You can throw it around, you can bang it. It doesn't matter. And this one on film was the one you saw that was just thrown around and and thrown on the floor and picked up. Some, some of the details are there. They're not as prominent as the hero one, as you can see. But on film, it's close enough. Because on film, you're not gonna see this sitting next to this. On the inside, it's basically the same technique. The pages are just notebook paper. I did the same strip method, as you can see. But just the backing part is a big piece of cardboard because I just needed the edges to look right on film so I can throw it down, toss it, doesn't matter. But everything else is the exact same size or as close as possible. So you have the hero book and then the stunt book. And let's go to the next book. As you're watching this video now in July or August, this book now does not exist because this is March. So this is the book on film that gets torched and burned up. It looks <laughs> honestly not as close. But again, on film, you're not gonna see these next to each other. This has one scene of it being burnt. So when it's down like this, you're really not gonna tell the difference. This one is made of the same stuff as the stunt book. It's exactly the same with the materials. It's just foam clay, no milliput, the inside pages. Let's uh, treat this stunt book like a stunt book. Knock it out of the way and show the inside of this one. You can see the edges are just darkened in. Now, if you want to darken in edges, you can add stain or just water down some black paint or brown paint. It's kind of up to you. That's all you really got to do. Because if you're having a stunt book that you're going to burn or toss around, you just need that look. Now, on the back, nothing's on the back because it's not supposed to be seen. It's only supposed to be seen that seemed to be burnt. That's really it. So that's what this one's made for. This one as you're watching right now, does not exist anymore. Let's go to the last book. This book is the burnt book, the post scene burnt book. It's my favorite and it was the cheapest one to make. It's made out of cardboard, black paint, gray paint, Elmer's glue, water and toilet paper, and then strapping. That is it. Well, and a notebook. Let's give a closer look. Oh wait, a few other things. Also sawdust. Now with this one, it's completely sculpted out of toilet paper and glue. With the mouth, I still wanted that butthole-ish look, but also to have a smile that the sole of the cover was released from its prison. Now on the inside, you can see the pages are gone, they're burnt out. Similar style of binding, you can see a staple holding it in right here but that's just paint I actually did burn these edges here uh, if you decide to burn pages be safe with it make sure you don't put anything flammable on it first because it will burn your house down do not burn your house down so be very careful if you decide to do that the back all the details burnt off and the side as well but the strapping is a thinner strapping I wanted to make it look like it was melted and not each hole has a stitch through it like it's been burnt off. But this one is my favorite. It's the cheapest one to make. I think if you have nothing, you don't even need sculpting tools for this one. Uh, a drill is optional because when it's wet with the toilet paper and glue, you can actually just 
stab holes into it with just like a sharp screwdriver. But I don't suggest that. Uh, be very safe with it. But putting holes into wet cardboard is pretty easy. So it's kind of up to you on the tools. But this one maybe costed or cost me three bucks to make. And it's mostly just the strapping. And I'm sure you have toilet paper. But if you don't have paint, you know, maybe five bucks, six bucks. But yeah, this one is a, this one's my fave. It just turned out really cool. So yeah, toilet paper and glue. Elmer's glue, it's the old school style. Big fan of it. But yeah, let's put the hero one up next to it. Yeah, pretty cool. So there it is. That's uh, that's how I made them for less than 100 bucks. You can make all four of these or four Necronomicons. You don't have to go with the whole latex thing if you don't want to, the whole molding process. It's kind of up to you. If you're doing something for a movie or just for yourself, you can save a lot of money. Necronomicons aren't hard to make unless you're trying to replicate something. Replicating takes time and takes a lot of patience. If you're going with an original design like I did, it's a lot more fun to be honest and it's a lot cheaper. So until next time, Evil Dead fans, you guys stay groovy.